basically when you get ready to lift, uh, basically after you do what happened in the past 10 years in, in display, visual, computer visions, and visual technologies, they asked me to put a PowerPoint together to talk about my last 10 years. Um, I guess uh, from from the service that started me up thing is basically is, is how to inspire each individual you to do your own thinking, your own entrepreneurship, your own startup, and so on and so forth. Um, so I started with a few slides today um, talk about uh, what I do today. Um, basically, I'm a director of a few companies right now. Lilvation is the core company. Play Motions and Lil Paper Group, I still run the company. But the funny thing is, uh, Lil Paper Group uh, invested in me in 2009 to expand their uh, print divisions. And basically, the print is basically print uh, close to about 50 60% of the world children's book. So, what is a tech guy and print come together is basically some mental reality and content space. Um, so that's why I stand and I chair for the uh, Hong Kong Cyberport Start Alumni Association, bringing the startup scene with the alumni at Starport as well as the incubation program. So basically, I just kind of chair that particular association to bring startup into hopefully get some uh, drastic results. Um, for the Hong Kong OGCIO is a G2121 strategies steering committees and also mentor for over 10 companies and my daughters as well. She's 13. Okay, so, um, so that's good. Yeah, Mac and PC, they don't mix. Everything's done on the Mac. So, what happened in 2003? So, that's when I started my, uh, my startup trip. Actually, I started when I was 12. But uh, in Hong Kong, this is my very first startup that I made it. But I also failed two startups before that in, uh, in early uh, 1992 and 1995. Okay, so I failed two startups before I made make, make it so far. So in 2003, my inspiration was, um, it happened during that particular time, there's a uh, SARS period. Uh, People are getting very, very isolated. Nobody's talking to each other. Uh, people are actually very cold to each other's, and, and kids are not talking to each other's. Uh, my daughter's back then was uh, three years old. Um, it was a quite a hard time for for me, for my family, because I caught a fever. Okay, when when during the start period, when you have a fever, two things in mind: one is you're going to die. And number two is when I'm going to die, right? So, um, so I went to see a doctor. Fortunately, it was it was just a normal cold. But the fact that is, uh, 2003 was a very memorable moment for me because um, um, I got fired from my job. Um, I was uh, I was the head of uh, digital music for Universal Music um, because uh, I guess one thing is it's not because I'm a stars. I guess I have a different view of where digital uh, content should go and we have different opinions in, in terms of where we should be heading. Back then, um, you know, when we, <clears throat> in uh, 1999, um, I knew a friend called Pony Ma, I don't know if you know him. Pony Ma is the chairman of Ten Cents right now. He asked my friend and I to invest in them in 1999, my friend invest. I didn't. So, um, otherwise I'd be a lot of money today. But, um, but the fact that is, uh, uh, in 2003 I got fired because I introduced paid music into China, as in terms of ringtone. Um, I got the best deal ever um, for ringtone and music, ringback tone back then with Universal Music, but back then music industry is still. They don't think about in terms of mass volume in China. They thought about, they still think about 99 cents. You cannot sell 99 cents US music being told in China. No way. So, you know, we get it down to one dollar, RMB. Um, 80, you know, 70, 17 cents went to the telco. 83 cents left between 10 cents in universal music. That was a deal of a lifetime. And that 83% was 50-50 split down the middle. 
There's no deal ever, ever done again. So I got fired being too smart. But because he rather than he wants the deal, he wants the equity of 10 cents. He wants 5%. So everybody's saying, you know, 10 cents will tell you to F off. Because there's no way that, you know, they're listing in NASDAQ at that time. But he eventually switched back to Hong Kong to get listing. But again, when people are listing on the market, you do not ask for equity. So I can fire it. That's good. So again, during the SARS period, I was looking for something that can connect people. And that's how I started with play motions, uh, computer visions, using projections, doing human character activities. And of course, it's, it's, my vision is to connect people and play. This is very clear from the start. Uh, uh, like my previous speaker said, you know, you need to really have to have a vision and a mission in place when you do a startup. And my mission is very, very clear from day one is to connect people and play. And uh, play using shadows, basically. Um, back then, remember, sorry, you don't touch anything, okay? So shadow, you're not touching, you're not touching the air. So you know, shadow play, you know, things like that. So it was pretty cool. So um, that's how I got my uh, business started in 2003. And again, the key thing is fundamentally for, ed for every startup is, um, what does that say in Chinese? Okay. And learn from kids to make us better companies because, um, again, um, my inspiration from kids, from my, from my child, and also at the same time is um, inspiration from, because kids are the worst, worst, worst consumer, okay? They don't have patience, they don't have, you give them 15 seconds, they don't like it, they drop it, they throw it, they don't care how you feel, they don't care about your feelings. These are kids, okay? So we learn from kids. PC. Play. No, it's a play. Okay. So no video for you guys today. It's a video. It's okay. I, I should just use my. Doing business always a plan B. Sure.
This is some uh, screen that we put together um, as a montage for all the stuff we have done in the past. From uh, 2003 to uh, 2008. Some of these, some of these units are still running today. At, uh, some of them at theme park, some of them in hospital. Some of them as far as uh, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, China. So we can see the, uh, the thing is not to uh, really empower individual, but the power to, in, is to in, the power, you know, is to power a lot of people through play. Here we go, sorry. So, and that's play motions using uh, play as a medium to get you guys activated. And um, this is how the unit looks like in uh, November 2004. Is a couple of pieces of metal, projectors, infrared, cameras, and a shuttle PC back there. So I take this around to sell and eventually cut down to a laptop and a very, very tiny projector as well. But back then, this is my first portable device called PlayMotion. So these are some of the screen that I put up learning phonics with kids. Teach kids how to be very, very be patient, using the shadow, standing still, trees going out of the head. Ocean Park has been running, and, uh, still running today. We installed this in 2006, so it's been almost seven years right now. Still running today. Um, this is at a festival walk with kids and the parents playing beach volleyball in front of the LED screen. And of course, teaching kids about giant cockroach. You know, kids, a lot of kids don't like it, but we put it in front of them, they would stamp on it, smash it, but you know, you empower kids to destroy cockroach. But at the same time, they learn about cockroaches as well. Um, not only the, um, we are, you know, doing a lot of things in this space, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, but the thing is, what are you gonna do with some of the spare time that you have. I mean, we don't work 724. Um, you do put a lot of time into your company, building up your company, but at the same time, you know, uh, get, get your community involved and that's doing good, design doing well. Uh, we do a lot of installations, we do a lot of effects for kids, uh, as well as uh, working with kids and adults and senior citizens. And this particular thing is, um, the senior citizens are very depressed in this particular sector. Uh, so basically we did a piece uh, where we can have the kids putting their hands in front of the uh, great char characters to put smile and color into their lives. So this is called a hands. This particular installation is working with uh, neuromuscular diseases, kids, uh, this is wheelchair bed. This is a 10th anniversary. Most of these kids would die before the age of 18 years old. Um, some of these are kids came to this uh, party with uh, with their um, healthy healthy brothers or sisters. Um, most of the time, past nine years, you know, these kids are the healthy kids. The brothers are play by themselves. These kids on wheelchairs never get to play, and this is the first time they get to play with the kids. So um, we brought a lot of tears to a lot of parents, which is good, and also um, the tears are. You know, kids, these kids are extending the arm way beyond their, their capabilities during their physical therapy. So we are putting a lot of, you know, not only tears into a parents' eyes, but also joys into the uh, kids' hearts. We're also using this particular tool in 2009 for a, um, for rehab, rehabilitations as well as our cramp ventures for bullying. Um, the, um, the unit was funded both by the government uh, as a, as a non-charity um, particular project, but at the same time, you know, we put our time and effort as, uh, into creating contents for them for free to put these into school so that they can teach about bullying and drugs. Of course, we, we do it for uh, sick children as well. These are kids suffering from mental illnesses. Uh, especially kids with mental illnesses, uh, they stimulate by graphics, things that's around sound, so basically we call stimulates. 
uh, we put them in um, school like this to to help kids to improve. In, you know, in, in terms of improve, it's, it's not about improve their IQ, it's improve their mental health, working with other kids, playing with each other, and basically put a smile on the head and on the face. This is a Kowloon Hospital, virtual reality room, they call it. Again, it's, it's for people suffering from strokes, physical therapy, and I think we are going to install another unit uh, pretty soon at uh, some other HA hospital around Hong Kong. So these are moving more and more. We also installed this in senior citizens as well in China. So some of our elements of success, what is it? Most of the installations that we, we, uh, we incorporate into our work has five elements. We have the, uh, the play. You know, it's got to have fun. Number two is you got to learn something from it. So number three is laugh because you don't laugh, you don't communicate. Basically, so we are we very focused on things that make people laugh. Make sure they dance. So we put a lot of music into the all the experience that we do. And lastly is healing the hearts. Healing the hearts is we're not a surgeon, we're not a doctor. It's basically we put. Um, we work with children to, you know, is we work with sick children as well, is to forget about their uh, the pain, it's the healing of the heart, and also we use it for color therapy as well. So we're very focused for the first four years to five years of our business, only focus on one product. The product is called Playmotion, the company is called Playmotion, and what do we sell? Playmotion, and that's it. So. As a startup is, we, we don't focus in the first few years to focus on what you're doing well. Uh, you're trying to do too many things. Uh, you will lose sight, you will lose your focus, you will lose your market shares. The reason why is that is, you'll be all of them that we call it. Uh, we're very focused on one thing, building the brand, building the awareness. We sleep, we talk, we breathe, only one product and one service. Remember back then we don't have a lot of mobile apps things, right? We don't. We cannot do one thing very focused. We have to carry a lot of computers, projectors, you know, things like that, and to look for a dark room, big space. But still, we're very, very much focused on doing one thing and one thing well. And so far, these unit has been installed over more than 17 countries in across Asia. My key success is people, passion, product, and profit. Most of the thing is the people. It's not about our employees, finding the good employees one thing for a startup. But the people that you work with, the communi community that you work with, the, the professional that you work with, the researcher that you work with, these are the people that's going to make your product <coughs> well known to the market. And passion is another thing that when you're working, we have the right formula, the right people, the right mix. You know, you have the evangelist, the people, the champion, that's going to, the one that has the passion is going to help you sell the product. Again, and then the product has to be good. Doesn't have, doesn't have to be best. Does not have to be the, you know, the, the iPhone with the latest technologies. But the thing is, you gotta have the passion of people and your objectives, and you believe in those products, and then your profit will come. So far, uh, we have worked with all these brands. We are very selective with who we work with. Uh, we work with brands that um, we don't... One of the key things is uh, when there's a competitor came on the scene competing with us, um, a lot of these competitors are driving price points. Okay, so I raised my price. I used to rent at you know $20,000 a day. We raised it up to twenty-five thousand because the competitor came in with a product that's ten thousand dollars. So most of the brand ask us, "Why are you more expensive than the other?" It's because of stability. We have our own brand. We build reputations. We took a lot of risk. We failed a lot, and you're paying twenty-five thousand dollars because we we will not fail you. We have a backup system. We have a consistency across all the brands. And your show is going to it's going to work first time. I don't know about the other companies. I don't know about the other players. But the fact that is, when you start building your brand, it costs you a lot of money, and 
is your reputation. And then we expand to China, of course, uh, that's, that's a lot of Chinese companies here, but uh, we've been working in China, subset of my company, for the last two years. And then in 2008, after four, four and a half years, we started going to the space of augmented reality. Um, augmented reality is one of the things is combine the physical and the digital space into one. So you can have face tracking, you can have mobile recognitions, you can have computer recognitions, combine the physical and digital from prints to geolocations, whatever, and you slap the digital layer on top. So that's when we start doing 2008. Of course, um, the computer vision industry back in 2008 is not exactly uh, powerful. Okay, the computer is very powerful, but the mobile sucks. Okay, um, it didn't really open up the camera until you know, I guess it's iPhone three, maybe iPhone four that they start opening up the camera. And back then, you know, you, you talk about Nokia, you know, but still, Nokia is it's Nokia. Android is Android, but still the, the camera hasn't opened up, so we cannot really do a lot of mobile augmented reality. So we start on the PC platform in 2008. Again, we focus on premium content. When you start a business, you have to really know where your target market as well as your market segment is. Then you really laser focus on that particular market to go after it. Otherwise, you go from high end to the low end, if you're a premium customer, no, you know, you're charging 25000 here and also you're charging $5,000 here, they're not going to be happy. So you have to be very, very consistent with your pricing and your market segment. In 2009, again, I was invested by a printing company. Again, looking at my vision, uh, you know, focus on one thing, do one thing well, and they want me to focus on augmented reality because they play, they print close to us, about 50 to 60% of the world children's book. So, we started making augmented reality in 2009. We introduced the first product in the world that we sold and retail. As of today, we sold close to about 8 million of these books. Uh, 10 million, sorry. Within, I think, count this year. So 10 million of these books worldwide in, uh, in uh, 17 languages in about 15 countries. And then we worked for Hallmarks, uh, creating uh, augmented reality green cards for them in also 2009, launched in during Valentine's Day. And so today we sold about 13 million of these cards at about $3, U, $3 US each. Again, is taking something that is um, pretty much, uh, you know, what we call declining or sunset industry green card is very much replaced by digital card and books are replaced by digital books and things like that, with apps and things like that coming on board. So we're adding a lot, uh, uh, another extra layers on top. But again, these are all based on a webcam, based on a PC. And here's some video of that. We work with great licenses source, from uh, Peanuts to Pixar to Marvel. Um, DC Comics. This is Tron from Disney. Marvel. Back then it was Marvel, it's Marvel, not Disney Marvel. So we empower them. We put a smile on their face. We're still doing it today. We're still selling these cards today, so. brand we work with and during that time you know we create augmented reality I got bored so I start creating other things these are playgrounds so these are some of the innovation that I created in the past never really launched into the market again that proof you know if you're not focused you don't make anything so these are four years ago design and it's only recently that people took notice of what is that. And so I kind of explained to this, hey, it worked today because it's, we have mobile phone, we have NFC, we have beacons, we have cameras. 
So that changes the, uh, again, when you think too far ahead on a product, sometimes the technology doesn't catch up. So you usually put it at the back burner. So these are some of the product that I have created in the past in 2009. These are NFC prototype for educations, where kids run around and play, learn, cognitive memories, um, also for, uh, for Alzheimer's disease, disease as well. So these are the mass synchronizations where we can sync up every piece of these uh, little toys with the iPhone so that they can ping an orchestra of instruments. So these are, this is called the, uh, the QL. Didn't launch into the market, we did a one year of research, development. The lesson learned is not to focus on cost when you do a prototype. We were focusing on cost. So that didn't work. But again, the technology is here. We can always revisit it and redo things again. And then in 2010, we start focusing on, again, physical and digital. We focus on holographic this time. So we come up with some cool and cool design for, for brand to use holographic uh, display in retail level. And this is how it looks like. Uh, we did not create our own product, but we distribute other products from Denmark. And then uh, later on in the year, we the um, the augmented reality took off on the mobile, so we start revisiting extent on augmented reality using mobile phones. Here's an example. This is the, uh, this concept was conceived, program, launch on, uh, launch on the app stores in less than 10 days. So um, we were working with McCain at that time, doing uh, DIY dinosaurs. We have some dinosaur assets from our first book. So we were able to roll out the uh, app very, very quickly. And, um, so you can see all these patterns is everywhere in, in the uh, particular mall and consumers basically download the app, take pictures of the uh, textures, skin it onto the, uh, onto the dinosaur in just about two clicks. Um, first day download was about a thousand and then we slowly scaled up to about six thousand. Remember back then there's not a lot of iPhones in the market, but um, Consider the, uh, it is, is, is the first augmented reality dinosaur in China, so they got a lot of PRs. And for that particular year, the advertising company has won a lot, a lot of grand awards in, in China, so that's a plus side. And then, 2011, we expand our portfolio again, more screen again, because remember we're dealing with visual technology here. Uh, we start working on multi-touch again with cameras, using multi-touch um, cameras to do very, very large screen. So we work with Mindstorm on the content to deploy bars in Hong Kong and China. Very long, these are the guys who created the world longest eye bar. And uh, so, so these guys are amazing. So we work with them and brought their product over to Asia. More screen again. These are screen controlled by radar sensing devices that we use to use in factory for safety. We turn it, we hack on it, and we put a TUIO interface into it so that people can program using body touch. And these are the product that we did in Hong Kong, some of the showcase, the, uh, the longest and the most panel in Hong Kong in one single space, that's in Hong Kong stations. A campaign for Bates, working with HSBC to put bubbles in people's head. So that that is the first and last because MTR does not want to have too many panels in one space because it's, it's too hot. So, new rules again, rules and regulation policy, which I hate. This is a construct, uh, the uh, CIC, this is in Kowloon Bay Area. So when you have time, you can go down and have a look. This is the only panorama of Hong Kong Island in Kowloon. 
taken in uh, HD resolutions. Again, more multi-touch. Uh, we also deploy multi-touch in retail at PCW, that's Hong Kong team, for retail initiative. This screen is in London. Uh, this is 24 panels, multi-touch. Each of them is full HD. So basically, a lot, a lot of pixels and multi-touch in that particular screen. And here's what we did today. So we did a lot of retail things. For multi-touch, holographics, virtual closets, This was commissioned by Hot Toys. Um, a lot of holographics in Iron Man. Lots of holographics, a lot of tech. And basically they asked us, can you do something that's floating in mid-air? And I said, and I go, if, if I can do it, I will not be talking to you. you know, Because there's no such things. If I can do it out of thin air, I'll be very rich by now. And I will not be talking to you. But unfortunately, we have to use a very, very simple technique it's called a pepper ghost. This is a holographic unit we did for Hot Toys. That's how it looked like. <clears throat> You probably, most of you have not, probably haven't seen this one, this is called a suit up. Okay, we did about 42 effects for, um, for Tony Stark in the uh, holographic unit here. So that is what I've done past 10 years, okay? So, um, so the, the key takeaway is, um, I guess, don't chase after money. I mean, as my previous speaker said, you know, do not work for money, okay? I mean, money will come to you when you believe in a certain product, passions, and you know, profit will come to you. Chase after your dreams, I think that's one thing is, a dream never dies, right? It's, it's one of the things that you keep going after your dream, what you believe in it. At the same time, empower as well as, you know, influence the people around you. Not really, you know, sell a product or too hard to sell, you know, it's, it's like when you work, walk into stores, you know, when, when you have a sales and you keep selling you things, you know. This is not part of the experience. A startup is also an experience, is that, it's, it's a journey. 
is part of you is who you are, what you believe. Uh, this is very important. And the last thing is, the takeaway is, you know, is to empower the people beside you to believe in your product, your service, and who you are. Sell yourself to other people and make them who you are and make them who they are. Not to really, um, not to really sell really too much of a product. It's sell your passion and your belief so that the next startup or the next entrepreneur, hopefully, you know, they, they will become a better person than who I am and who you are. Okay? So I guess uh, that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I think we still have some time for your yeah. questions and and so any any questions from the audience to ask to ask Andrew? Yeah, I'm not a policy maker, so, so and I don't have any, any questions. Uh, five years from now, uh, what will it be like walking around society? Uh, we can already do augmented reality things. But we all have Google Glass, and we decide what product we want to see whenever we want to see it. They have interacting uh, hologram people Five years from now? Well, I technology might be very much advanced today, but again, it's the adoption and implementation is going to take a long time. Acceptance of technologies, the cost of technologies, uh, Google Glass, you cannot buy a pair. Well, you can get a pair for $15,000 Hong Kong on eBay somewhere. But um, most of the people cannot sell it anyway because it's under uh, confidentiality and so on and so forth. We have, we have, I have two pairs in San Francisco. We cannot sell it, we only can develop one. So in the future, in five years, we still have a lot of things that, um, as my previous speaker said, you know, with, with, with mobile is one of the things, it's one of the key drivers that's going to uh, have second or third street. Augmented reality is going to be around for quite some time. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be on your dashboard, it's on your, your, your computer, because with organic LED, uh, you're not going to have uh, what we call a solid back. You can use, this, this can be transparent, so you can, be, you can put on retail space to, to see things through, through glass. Um, Google Glass is going to be one of the things that people wear as a what we call personal device. Um, and um, for me, Google Glass, for people who's wearing glasses, is not very comfortable because you keep looking up. So your eyes is going to go really weird, okay? When, when your eyes goes up, then you know that guy has a, has a pair of Google Glass on. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I think augmented reality is what we call content. Content is still very much the king. Then the next thing is, one of the things I didn't talk about is uh, personal computing. Personal computers is, is today we call wearable device. Okay? Personal computing eventually will be embedded onto your peripherals, such as your eyewear, your watch, collecting data and put images, content in front of you where it fits. So I see in five years is basically you have contents here, you have data on the other side, and you have device on the other side. where. There's a convergency here. And, and I see five years from now, you will see a lot of people talking to each other as well. well I mean, it's, it's like when you have Bluetooth headphones about five years ago. You see people talking to themselves all over the street, right? Um, you get used to it, but eventually, in five years, you, you see people shaking people's hand in front of you. Or maybe, you know, a lot more gestures in front of you because they think they're seeing that person in front of them rather than just talking to them. Okay, so it's gonna be a lot more nut house. A lot, of, a lot of people, crazy people in Hong Kong or around the world, especially advanced cities. People who talking to each other, conferencing, doing things like this, you know, you know in, in front of you because augmented reality, is, there's another thing, it's, it's called computer vision. You will have a camera here so that you can do gestures, right? So that means you can see a holographic unit in front of your glasses other people don't see it. So you'd be doing things like this, you're using computer gestures, you then play the object in front of you. Five years will be a lot 
a lot more crazy than what we are today. So I hope this answers your question. The technology is not going to be that much advanced, but uh, like I said, um, um, it's going to be a lot of wearable device in the next five years. Okay. Next question. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We, we have a lot of time, so we have the last six minutes. Healthcare? I'm quite interested in knowing that we have. We have? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, um, how they receive your technology uh, and whether there's a cost concern, whether I'm looking for those physical disabled as well as uh, those in Sanzano, or politically impaired people, and whether the poor people could have access to these technologies. I think, I think um, when we started about seven to eight years ago in the healthcare sectors, most of our equipment is very expensive. And uh, we, we, we tried to do as much as we can to support it. We did a, we did a year and a half uh, research in the, uh, the pain distraction therapy, working with the uh, Hong Kong University. So we, we give them a set of equipment for free, where it cost us close to about a quarter million dollar back then. So we give it, we donate for free. The computer today is getting cheaper, projecting that all these things coming down in price. Um, but um, um, what I think is we, we don't have enough research in Hong Kong to do these kind of things, whereas uh, in Europe and also in the US have, has more university funded um, to do things like that. But Hong Kong is a bit behind because I think it's because of the NGO scene, people always applicate, applying for money and things like that. That is, filling reports is not the easiest things. But the good thing is, one of the key things is, um, is the, the cost of mobile is getting cheaper. So there's the camera, sensors, and things like that. So a lot of smart kids around using wearable device. Wearable device is getting re really, really cheap in the next five years. That can be part of the healthcare uh, things that you can wear and you can move around. They know you're moving around. So these things are getting cheaper and cheaper. Our technology is already old but with wearable technologies are getting cheaper. So in the future of healthcare and also for senior citizens, there's gonna be a lot of things open up, especially with uh, what we call wearable computing as well as uh, uh, Bluetooth enabled and mobile devices as well, like uh, you know, iPhone, things like that. So hopefully that answers your questions. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Freddy. Um, Hi, Freddy. <laughs> Actually, I, I know your company and I really like it. Thank you. And uh, I'm from a startup community as well. I have my uh, social, I do social innovation. I collaborate uh, minority to do actually interaction for fun, but face to face. And I'm not a uh, very low tech <laughs> way for, for education. And for what you say is that it's, it's 4P, it's very successful in the people and the passion, the product, the profit. My, my question is it's a startup, it's actually about people. So, how do you find? suitable right people that believe in you that you find very very right I, I need you how do you find it i think is it's like any startup you're looking for investor you have to pitch every day you pitch you know today you pitch to one vc or, or angels tomorrow you pitch to 10. every day you have to pitch you find that people believe in you is is through communications again there's no shortcut to it. There's no shortcut. Um, for me, I entered, uh, back then what I did was, actually it was my wife who asked me to enter a competition called the Hong Kong ICT. I don't know what that is. Um, I, I, I don't know what's going to bring me, but I entered. Um, I won a few award and I won the uh, startup award that year and also the AP ICT, which is equivalent of what we had a few days ago. So I, I won uh, Asian Pacific in a very short time, in less than one year. So it gave, it gave, gave me a lot of exposure in the media, and also um, incu uh, Sabaport invited me to join the incubation program. And everything is pretty smooth sailing. But one of the key thing is, the reason I think we won and we got a lot of award is because we very focused on one thing, and we preach every day to what we do in very simple week. All we do, we use projection unit to connect people and play. We make all the projection interactive. So in less than 15 seconds, people kind of get a hook 
onto what I'm saying. So you got to have, if you're going to pitch, you have you got to have a 15 second elevator pitch. You got to have a deck, 30 second deck, to about minute deck, and also a three minute deck. So you need three decks. And also your heart is all. I mean, you, you, I don't have to pitch with a deck. It's the same thing. If you're going to find the right people, that's going to support your startup, whatever you believe in. Okay, your deck is always in your head. There's nothing to show. There's no mobile. It's all word and it's face to face. So you've got to believe in the product. You have to find the passion to do it. And you have to enroll people. That's what we call it. It's enroll people into their life, into your life. And also find that particular person that fits into your organizations. You look for a marketing person. You know, you, 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 you do a jobs DB, you look for a marketing executive. Don't look for that. Look for the people that fits and have passion in what they're doing. So it might not be from marketing field. This guy's probably from, 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 from journalism. Well, you always interview people for the soft skill, not the hard skill. It's a soft skill that's going to take them a long way because of the passion. They got to love your product to find the right people. Thank you. Um, one more questions? Probably the last question. Last questions. Any more? Okay. Um, how about the right partners? Do you have a lot of partners? I mean, when you grow up, how do you grow up? You know, where, how many people did you start? I started with one person myself. Um, and, um, I didn't really have the right partner until 2009. But I can share my experience with you with how I started with my Chinese, op Chinese operations. Um, I started my Chinese operation back in 2011. Well, I had been up and running since 2003. 2009, we have investments. I mean, we have uh, quite a bit of investment coming in uh, to, uh, for my first exits. The key is I waited two, two and a half years before I went to China. One is to find the right partner. It could be a company, it could be an individual. Uh, luckily, I was uh, introduced, um, my partner is the ex-general manager of Microsoft China. So he is the one who instrumented to build Microsoft China back then. It was the uh, first four employees. It was look after the uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Southeast China, so Shanghai, Guangzhou, Beijing, market area in Sichuan. Um, he has a Western culture thinking because of Microsoft. He has a local Chinese partner, that is because he's a Chinese. Um, he's also, he doesn't have to work anymore, but he believes in my product. I sold him, I talk, he's supposed to, I supposed to sell him stuff. But in the other way around, I, I asked him to join me. So I enrolled him, in a, in, in, within an hour I enrolled him to join me. So I couldn't let this guy go. So when, when you see the opportunity, you grab that person, you enroll them into your life. So finding the right partner is, is, is one of those journeys you keep looking for this particular person. You don't know when this person will show up. Show, will show up. Eventually when this person is right in front of you, you don't give up. It's like uh, finding your husband or finding your boyfriend or girlfriend. You don't give up. It's the same thing finding the right partner. You don't know when and where. So you just have to be prepared. It's very, very difficult. How do you, you know you get along with each other? Well, you just know it's one of those things. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you base on sometimes is when people don't talk about money. That's one thing. You talk about money, you know, everything's money, 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 money. This, this is not the right person for me anyway. And when you talk about visions, you know, where do you see the, the world in five years, or three years, or two years? What do you see a product's gonna take you? Where do you see the interactivities? What do you love? And it's the commonalities, but the different hard skill set is your commonalities, what you believe in, your values, is the one that's gonna match you closest. That's the person's. The hard skill set, you know, is like, he's a number guy, I'm not. He's very operational, I'm not. 
is not creative I am so it's not to find somebody that exactly matches you it's to find somebody that believes in you and has share the same visions and the rest is easy you don't have to find somebody exactly like you you'll never find a person exactly like you but find a person that compliments you no matter your strength and your weaknesses they're always by your side no matter in good time and in bad time so those are the partners that you want to look for and, and it's hard yes. and those days easy there's no formula to it but you have to believe in yourself and believe in the uh, be passionate about what you do, that's all. This from my experience, getting someone confident to each other don't have different Sure. You can't share the confidence. I know. But <laughs> you, you, you can't sleep with a man, right? So but you can talk to a man. So but but like I said you just know it's, it's one of those things you just know. It, it's, it's a gut feeling because being an entrepreneur you got to rely on your instinct. You got to rely on your gut feeling. You know, you you, you, you think something is eureka moment, but but that you you eureka moment is something. You're gonna have you you have a lot of these moments, but you don't exercise them. You're not gonna have anything come out. Okay, so so it's the same thing with 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 uh, with people. You you just know, and it's a gut feeling. You just have to take that instinct and take it to the next steps, and that's that's more important. It's your gut feeling. If it doesn't work, three months, divorce them. Right? Find the next one. Fail fast, move on. Okay? With an executive level, one or two months you already know. Three months already long. You get rid of it, bye bye, thank you very much. Okay, three months later, if it's okay, you give them a stock option and everything. These are the signing points, these are the these are the conditions. It doesn't work, three months, bye bye. You have to be hard. You have to hit hard. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me.